Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So for those of you who are into global soccer or global football, football, whatever you call it, the story is not going to be new. It actually came out a few weeks ago. As I said, I've, I've been having some technical issues with YouTube as of late, so I, I'm only able to, I've only been able to get to this story now. As I said, if you if you you follow over you know sports over in Europe, particularly soccer, then you probably definitely heard about this incident. Um, I've covered you know racism in Brazilian soccer for years. I've covered how black Brazilian athletes are treated when they play in Europe. So this is really a continu continuation of, you know, something that I've talked about for a number of years. Um, I don't know if it's been a month or a few weeks that I posted. The last time I talked about Vinicius Jr. or Vinny Jr., who is the, uh, the subject of today's video, you know, he gave his own response to some of the racist taunts that he's been receiving since he started playing soccer over in Spain. Um, so I just wanted to get into this video. It's the latest update. Uh, and again, it's it's from a couple weeks ago. I'm just now I'm just now able to get to it. But today's video, Vinny Jr. breaks down in tears as he talks about fighting racism in Spanish soccer. So before I get into this video, as usual, I want to request that you like this video and share this video, subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. With that said, let's get into the story uh, behind the story and the video for today. So this was Vinicius Jr. at a press conference a few weeks ago, and it was uh, to discuss really a friendly uh, match between the Brazilian national team and the Spanish national team. Now, understand how this works. Uh, as Vinicius Jr. is Brazilian, he does play in Europe. He does play in Spain. But when there are national games that sometimes they're preliminaries to, you know, set up the next uh, chart for the World Cup or another tournament, then he's obviously he's going to play for the Brazilian national team. So in this case, his Brazilian national team is playing against the Spanish national team and he plays in the Spanish league for one of the most popular teams there. So, uh, as I said, uh, this, I wanted to talk about the racist taunts directed at Vinicius jr. Um, there was a video that I did a few weeks ago or a month ago where he kind of reacted to it. Um, he gave this black power pose that it made headlines back in Brazil um, then I want to get into the comments of a, one of the Spanish players who actually is Vinicius' teammate on the team that he plays for in Spain. And, then, you know, the question of Spain versus Brazil and how a lot of countries around the world do deny racism. You know, they want to make it so that, you know, oh, that's a problem of another country. You know, as I've, I've talked about racism in Brazil on the blog since 2011. So there should be no question about, oh, does racism exist in Brazil? Like, you really have to ask that question after everything that I've talked about all this time. Again, it speaks to this issue. This this is something that has to do with the way Spanish fans taunt Vinicius Jr. because he's a black player. But it speaks very much to the situation of the so-called Brazilian racial democracy, where for years Brazil just openly denied that racist acts, gestures, and comments and jokes were a regular part of Brazilian society. They denied it for years. To this point, they you really can't deny it. You know, I would say 25, 30 years ago, even when I first started, you know, talking about the situation in Brazil, people were still in denial. And I always say people know that racism is in Brazil. They just can't acknowledge it. You know, there, there was an anthropologist, uh, I think it was Lilia Schwartz, I think she's a professor of anthropology at the University of Sao Paulo. And she says, Brazil is like little islands of racial democracy surrounded by racists at every corner or something to that degree. So she's like, you know, the studies were saying that. I think this was in the early part of the 2000s or within the first 10, year, 10 years of 2000. I can't remember exactly, but it was a point of it was something like 97 percent of Brazilians were ready to acknowledge that Brazil was racist. 
but that 98 percent of those people said they themselves were not racist it was almost like when you say and brazil is an island of of, of racial democracy surrounded by races in every corner so the people were saying, I'm not racist, but I know somebody who is. So nobody wants to assume or accept or admit that they have racist thoughts. OK, so let's just get into what happened. I'm going to show a little bit of the video of this press conference with, with Vinicius Jr. And I just want to comment on this. Right. Vinny Jr. breaks down in tears as he talks about fighting racism in Spanish soccer. You know, as I said in my previous video about Vinny Jr., uh, he's been the constant target of racism in Spanish soccer. Striker Vinicius Jr. was chosen by the Brazilian Football Confederation to speak to journalists on Monday, March 25th, the eve of the friendly match against Spain, which will be which was to be played at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, the home of Real Madrid. Playing in the Spanish soccer league for the last four seasons, Vinicius Jr. has been a constant victim of racism and he shed tears. He cried when he he addressed the subject. The Real Madrid striker will be an important figure in the match, not only because he plays at the club stadium, but precisely because he is the, he is central to the fight against racism. The game will not only have a, a sporting connotation, but will also be used for anti-racist actions. I'm sure some of you have seen some of the photos, the press photos of soccer players holding these huge banners saying, say no to racism. So whether we're talking Brazil or we're talking Europe or any specific you know country in Europe, I mean, it's the same thing. How do we want to continue to deny this this uh, this issue? These are just some of the related the the the, the problems that Vinicius Junior has been having in in Spain and Spanish soccer leagues has been well known in Brazil. These were just some of the the headlines for some of the newer related news to this particular video. Um, Vinicius Junior calls for punishment for new racist attack in Spain. President Lula, Brazil's president, speaks out after new racist attack against Vinny Junior. Real Madrid filed complaint after new case case of racism against Vinny Jr. Now, mind you, you, you know, Spain, like so many other countries, as I've said, this applies to Brazil just as well, has denied this for so long. It was like I think it was like the president of the Spanish league that Vinicius plays for just openly denied this issue of racism in Spanish soccer. So anyway, I want to I'm not going to just I'm, I'm not going to just overdub the video completely. I'm going to just show you a little bit of the video uh, of what Vinicius Jr. said. Um, but this is what he said during the press conference. It was, you know, listen to listen to his words. In the very near future, there will be fewer cases of racism and black people will be able to have a normal life like everyone else. And I want to keep fighting just for that, because if it were, as I said before, if it were up to me, I would have given up by now because I stay indoors. No one will swear at me. No one would do anything to me. I go to matches with my head focused on the game so that I can do the best for my team. And sometimes it's not always possible. So I have to concentrate a lot every day. I'm sorry, I just wanted to play soccer. I just want to play. I just want to do everything for my club and for my family. Thank you. So then, you know, a, a, a pause in the action is, you know, addressing this issue that has plagued him for so long. Vinicius just broke down. You know, how would anybody react in this scenario? Um, he continued in the interview when he said, it's getting sadder and sadder. Every day I feel less and less like playing. It's really sad what I've been going through every game, every day. Every complaint is getting worse. It's not just for me, but for all black people who suffer on a daily basis. If it was just for me and my family, I don't know if I would continue, but I was chosen to defend a very important cause. And I study every day so that in the future, my five-year-old brother doesn't go through what I'm going through, commented Vinny Jr., the striker also spoke about the lack of punishment, an issue that, according to Vinny Jr., has been a fundamental factor in preventing racism from being combated. OK, so. What listen to what Vinicius said, Vinicius knows that particularly you know, we're talking about black Brazilians, black Brazilians go through this every day. You know, you have to take the mask off of this. We have to eliminate the idea that racism is veiled. You know, it's covered up. And it's true to a degree that sometimes racism is veiled. But there's in Brazil, as of late, and, you know, I, since I've been studying Brazil, I, I never I always said I don't see nothing veiled about it. The veiled racism is just kind of like the kind like, 
did he mean what he said? I mean, did I interpret that wrong? Or situations happen where you don't have, uh, you're not very clear that it's very, it's absolute that this is what happened. But then there's open, blatant racism that no one can deny. And in Brazil, just like in a lot of other countries, both like veiled and blatant racism does exist. I just, you know, I got fed up with people talking about veiled racism in Brazil because ever since I've studied it, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm acknowledging that it does exist, but why do we want to say that it's veiled racism when we see so many blatant acts of racism that happen in Brazil every day, you know? Um, so let's see, uh, let me see here. He says, if we, this is Vinicius Jr., you know, another part of the interview or the press conference, if we punish all these people who commit crimes and here they don't consider it a crime, we'll start to evolve. Everything will get better for everyone. I make so many complaints. Often letters arrive to make more complaints. But in the end, it happens like my friend in Barcelona. They close the case and nobody knows anything. A lot of times there are kids here cursing at me. And I don't blame the kids because they don't understand. I don't understand racism or I didn't understand racism at their age. It's complicated, said the player. So, you know, this idea that no matter how many times you complain and make denouncements against racism, nothing seems to be getting done. This seems to be the case of what's going on in Spain. Now, in Brazil, it's taken decades for Brazil to openly acknowledge, like, yes, this does happen in the country. What do we do now? You know, they implement quota systems. There was uh, legislation that was passed against uh, what's called recreational racism, the racist jokes that people made. This happened in Brazil uh, at the beginning of the year. So at least Brazil is acknowledging it. It's, I mean, it's no secret anymore. It's a, it's a, it's, it's an open, you know, for anybody who can just do a Google search on Brazil, whether you speak Portuguese or you just speak English, there's plenty of sources online, including blackbrazilToday.com, where I've covered this for what, like 13 years now. Take a look at blackbrazilToday.com and just punch in the keyword racism or racial discrimination, whatever. And just look at the hundreds of articles that are over there. I, I suppose I'm just making that up. So the press conference came about because Brazil was to face Spain on March 26th in that friendly match. I don't, you know, I don't even know who won that match, but that's because that's not really important. That wasn't the point of covering this story. Um, a well-known journalist in Brazil, uh, Marcos Luca Valentin, he said about Vinicius, said he's on his own. And he's speaking about the lack of support that Vinicius Jr. has to fight you know, situations of racism that he's experienced regularly in Brazil or uh, in um, in Spain. So on the mor on the morning of Monday, the 25th, the video showing football player Vinicius Jr. crying as he talks about the racist attacks he suffered during the Spanish league season went viral on social media, generating a series of comments from people concerned about the player's mental health and the lack of support from the Spanish government, which denies the existence of racism in the country. For Mondo Negro, the website, the journalist Marcos Luca Valentin was punctual in his analysis that the player, Vinicius, is alone in the fight against racism in Spanish soccer. Right. The journalist and sports editor at TV Global, again, Brazil's top television network, he, he issued a statement to the Mundo Negro website, uh, the, the content creator and the creator of the Mundo Negro website, uh, Silvio Nascimento, in which he spoke about the lack of support the player has received from Spanish soccer bodies. He's on his own. Vinicius Jr. has his family there with him, but he's alone, he said. There are several examples, but I'll bring you the closest one, which was yesterday. Again, this was two weeks ago. Carvajal who is a white Spanish football player who plays for Real Madrid with Vinicius Jr. He's his teammate. He gave an interview yesterday saying that there is no racism in Spain, that Spain is not a racist country. During a press conference on Monday attended by players from the Brazilian national team and the Spanish national team who would play in a friendly on Tuesday afternoon, Real Madrid fullback Danny Carvajal said, quote, it's not like that. I don't think Spain is a racist country. I come from a humble neighborhood in, in Leganés. There's never been a problem. I have friends of a different skin color and there's never been a problem. Then there are the cases of those who enter stadiums to let off steam who shouldn't enter stadiums anymore. They insult with what they know hurts. OK, so let me listen to what he's saying. He's saying, OK, so you acknowledge that you you've seen people come in and, quote unquote, let off steam. These people shouldn't enter the stadiums anymore. OK. So what are they doing that leads you to believe that they shouldn't come into stadiums anymore if you at the same time believe that, OK, Brazil, 
Spain is not a racist country. Brazil, you know, St- Spain doesn't have racist people, but yet you can say the people who make such taunts against a black player, okay, yeah, they should be excluded from coming into the match. But so then, how do you deny that if this is happening in Spain, that this is not a racist problem? I'm trying to make that make sense. I, I'm just not getting it. So, Valentin, for Valentin. Carvajal's speech reinforces the loneliness of Vinicius Jr., who is a member a member of FIFA's anti-racism committee in the fight against racism. He continues, that's how lonely Vinicius Jr. is. His teammate isn't ashamed to give an interview saying that Spain isn't racist. He goes through this every day, he said, recalling that the president of La Liga, Javier Tebas, has also denied the existence of racism in Spain. The journalist recalled the episode in which a Dow representing the Brazilian player was hung from a bridge. They made a dial representing Vinicius Jr. wearing real Madrid clothes hanging from a bridge. That's a death threat. That's what they want for Vinicius Jr. They want for him to die, hanged in a public square, agonizing like a black body, so that they can rejoice in the pleasure of seeing it happen, he said. The case took place in mid-2023, and the, the four people responsible for the episode were fined 60,000 euros, which is worth about 316,000 Brazilian reais, and will not be able to enter the sports venues for a period of two years. Uh, journalist Marcos Luca Valentin points out that Vinicius Jr. has already done what he had to do in European soccer. Quote, he's already scored in the Champions League final. He's already fulfilled his dream of playing for the biggest club in the world. It's up to him to know what's best for him, of course. But the statements he made crying yesterday, saying that he's losing his will to play football, that's very serious. He's only 23 years old. It's not good for him. Maybe he doesn't feel right now how bad it is. He doesn't explode, but he implodes. That's somewhere in the back of his mind. So, uh, Marcos Luca Valentin, this is very necessary comments that he made and i have to say that uh the new generation of, of sports journalists and just journalists uh, black journalists in brazil in general are now speaking out more about this issue whereas when i first started studying about brazil in the early 2000s you just didn't hear this much talk about the issue of race publicly on television now it's everywhere you know the the movimento negro has sufficiently and successfully brought this issue to the front page now whereas before there would always be like a small clip about something that happened in brazil in the biggest newspapers right so if you don't have any background on this story definitely go back go back into my uh youtube history and just look at the videos that i have i have a couple videos that talk about benicius jr being one of the most valued players in the world in terms of how much it would take for him to transfer to another team but uh, what was the date on this video? Oh, I can't tell. It was about a month ago. After scoring a goal, Vinny Jr. responds to racist crowd with a black fist. Soccer star has been the victim of racism in European soccer numerous times. Now, I've seen just report after report. I, it's I, It could be as many as 15 to 20 uh, racist incidents that happened to Vinicius. It could be more than that. I'm just saying it seemed like in, the, in a period of a few years, it was just like every, every time you turn around, Benicius was the, 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 the target of racist taunts at some, you know, Spanish soccer stadium. Uh, even if you if you just want to read the, these articles in English, the day that Benicius broke down in tears, this is the, the, the guy I was just talking about, says uh, Carvajal, his teammate on, on Real Madrid, defends Spain against racist, racism ac- accusations. Danny or Dani. Carvajal claims Spain is not a racist country. This is despite what he's seeing Venetia is going through. Um, that, that always blows my mind how people can say that. It's the same thing that happens in Brazil. Spain is not a racist country. Carvajal disagrees with Venetia. This is your teammate. You see this happening to him all the time, but yet you're still going to deny what he goes through. Uh, Carvajal defends Spain against racism accusations amid Venetia's junior incidents. All right. Let me see. What does this headline say? Danny Carvajal uh, claims Spain is not a racist country despite continuous abuse of Vinicius Jr. in La Liga. As Real Madrid defender vows, he will not be back against club teammate in friendly clash with Brazil. Now, as I've said, this speaks to the question in Brazil. OK, you do a Google search in Portuguese. Now, this is as of late um, years ago. You had 90, 97, 98 percent of Brazilians who said racism is not a problem in Brazil. Racism doesn't exist. 
Here we are in August of 2023, a research said that 81% of Brazilians consider Brazil a racist country. The question is Brazil a racist country? Eight in 10 Brazilians consider Brazil a racist country. Um, let me see what else we say. Brasileiros de some viver em país raísta. So Brazilians themselves are acknowledging like, yeah, this is a problem here. Eight in 10 people consider Brazil a racist country. Then you got other people, You for the longest time, não existe racismo no Brasil. O que existe é coincidência. So racism doesn't exist in Brazil. It's a coincidence, right? They're asking a the question now, is Brazil more racist than the United States? That's a question that I've talked about previously. Um, let me see. More than half of Brazilians have already witnessed an act of racism. Okay, Brazil is the country least racist in the world, says a, a researcher or says research. I don't know how they can come to that conclusion with all of the data that we have now. You want to look in English, uh, look in English, look for the term racial democracy, because Brazil has always, you know, promoted itself as a racial democracy until it became the mythology, the myth of racial democracy in Brazil, which you see in these headlines. Uh, how can miscegenation or, you know, uh, relationships across color lines exist at the same time as racial discrimination? We're seeing we're seeing this play out in the United States as well now, as people should know. Just because you lay with somebody doesn't mean you can you're automatically not racist. 1982 article by one of Brazil's top sociologists at the time, 1982, Brazilian racial democracy. Is it a reality or a myth? Just numerous sources. Diversity in Brazil is still just an illusion and on and on and on. You know, again, how do we how do we still deny this with all of this information that we that, you know, that we have these days? Say, so, OK, here, April 20th, 2022. Brazil is not racist. It just has racist idiots. You know, is Brazil really a racist country? A lot of people still denying it. Uh, let's see. Brazil is not racist. It's a mixed country. OK, because <laughs> you're a mixed country does not mean it's not racist. OK, so and, and on and on. So this is something like I said, I've been talking about this for a number of years. So what we saw happen with Vinicius Jr., even though we're talking about what's happened in Spanish soccer, this is something that very well speaks to the situation in Brazil. Even I can say that Brazil is ahead of Spain, Spain in terms of how they're dealing with racism these days because it's open acknowledgement. There are policies to address this issue in Brazil. They've, you know, mandated quotas in universities, quotas in other, you know, genres in the country to address the racial inequalities in Brazil. So at this point, you have to say Brazil is far ahead of Spain. They're still in the denial, right? So anyway, wanted to just, this video, you know, this topic happened a couple weeks ago and I wasn't able to cover it immediately. So I wanted to share this with my subscribers. Definitely drop a comment in the comment section. Like this video, share this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Click on that notification bell so that you are aware when I put up new videos. And with that said, I'm going to end this video here. We request that you all come back. Check out the next video that I post.